friends in last uh, few sessions we were discussing about uh, quality management and uh, in last two sessions you recall we focused on total quality management and as a very important part of total quality management to make TQM implementable in your organization the concepts of statistical quality management are very important. The tools and techniques which uh, probability and statistics offer us these tools will help you in measuring the performance of your processes. These will help you in measuring the performance of output of your processes and these measurements will help you to keep your processes within the limits. We discussed that variations are natural. You cannot eliminate variation from your processes, but variations can be classified in two categories. One variations which are random which can happen because of some chance. So, those things which are happening because of some chance you do not have any specific reason of their happening these are random variations, but there are non random variations also which are happening because of some particular issue. Maybe the coolant is not properly working in your machine and therefore, overheating is taking place and because of overheating some defects are generated. So, now you know that because of improper functioning of coolant pump, coolant is not properly coming and it is resulting into overheating and that overheating is giving you defects. So, this is a assignable causes and you can eliminate these assignable causes and then the variations related to all these assignable causes can also be eliminated. So, two types of variations are there assignable variations and random variations. Random variations are acceptable we should know the limits of random variation for our processes and we try to keep our processes within the limits of natural variation the random variations and whenever our processes cross these limits of natural variation whenever processes enter into those reasons of assignable variations we need to stop the process we need to debug and then after fixing the problem we can again start our process. So, this is the advantage of statistical quality control that how you can continuously improve if you are able to minimize the variations if you are able to minimize the stoppage of your processes because of assignable reasons that is a very visible indicator of improvement of your process. So, we have discussed that uh, this type of quality control require making of some important type of QC charts and we discussed in our previous class that uh, these QC charts uh, have a very typical kind of arrangement where you have uh, a central line, the upper control line and the lower control line and in this class we will see with the help of some data that how we are going to plot these different types of quality control charts. So, now let us see some data and see how we are going to use this data to plot the quality control charts. Now, here we have a situation that a quality inspector is taking 5 samples and out of these 5 samples in each sample 4 observations are made. So, whenever you are taking a sample you are taking 4 units there may be a lot of uh, let us say uh, 50 units out of 50 units uh, you are randomly picking 4 units uh, in a particular sample and what you are measuring the length of time for glue to dry how much time 
a glue is taking to dry. Now, that time is uh, measured in minutes. Now, the analyst computed the mean of each sample and then computed the grand mean. Now, for this sample 1, let us say these samples are taken at different intervals. The first sample is taken let us say at 10 am, the second sample is at 11, third at 12, fourth at 2 pm and then it is at 3 pm. So, that is how these 5 samples are taken and each sample we have 4 observations. Now, in the first sample these values are indicating that one particular product is taking 12.11 minutes for drying the glue. The second is taking 12.10, third is taking 12.11 and fourth is taking 12.08. So, this is the mean of this sample. 12.10 is the mean of first sample. Similarly, 12.12 is the mean of second sample, 12.11 and 12.10, 12.12, these are the means of different samples. Now, because we are interested in the time to time for glue to dry. So, this is my x, this is the variable in which I am interested now. Some of you may be interested that how much glue is being applied, how much glue is being applied. So, that may become a second x and that units may be in grams or milligrams etcetera. So, you can make as many x charts as possible that depends that how many variables you want to actually control. So, depending upon the important parameters important variables which you want to uh, control that many number of uh, x bar r charts are required. For the purpose of understanding how to draw x bar r chart we are considering only one particular variable and that particular variable here is time for glue to dry and these are the values in minutes and we have taken the average of each of these samples. Now, further it says use this information to obtain 3 sigma control limits for means of future times. It is known for, from previous experience that the standard deviation of the process is 0 0.02 minutes. So, now based on this information we have to make a a x bar r chart. Now, we have already seen the calculations of, uh, so you can say that this is uh, x 1 bar, this is x 2 bar, this is x 3 bar, this is x 4 bar, this is x 5 bar. So, the average of uh, x 1 bar to x 5 bar is x double bar. So, now we are doing the calculation of x double bar. So, x double bar is actually the x 1 bar to x 5 bar divided by 5 and that calculation is done here and that is coming 12.11 and all these values you please remember are coming in minutes. So, these are the calculations for x bar, x double bar for plotting the central value or central uh, limit for the purpose of this chart. Now, the important thing is you have to find 3 important values in the chart and in this case we have CL, UCL and LCL. CL we have found that is 12.11. CL is 12.11, UCL and LCL, UCL and LCL these are equal to CL plus minus 3 standard deviation that is given in this problem 
that we are going to follow three sigma control limits. So, as we have discussed in our previous sessions also that uh, all the natural variations, all random variations or all variations because of chance are considered within the three sigma natural limits. So, if uh, though in this problem it is mentioned, but even if it is not mentioned you will take three sigma. Normally, if you want to have uh, some other limits, if you are going to have uh, more stricter norms, then you can have a plus minus 2 sigma limits uh, or plus minus 2.5 sigma limits. Uh, so, that may be a very specific case depending upon some very crucial items, but uh, in general we take uh, plus minus 3 sigma limits uh, though it is mentioned, but it may not be mentioned also. So, you are going to calculate plus minus 3 standard deviation. Now, in this particular case uh, the standard deviation of uh, process is given as 0 0.02 minutes, standard deviation is given as 0 0.02 minutes, but otherwise if you remember we can also get uh, the control limit central value that is the x bar, here I can write x bar plus minus a 2 r bar that is also a way to determine three standard deviation in case of x bar r charts. Now, here for that purpose I have to calculate the value of r bar for each of these samples. Now, how do I calculate the r first like for this first sample when values are 12.11101.08. So, the maximum value R 1 let me write R 1 here that will be x max minus x min x max is 12.11 and x min is 12.08. So, this becomes 0 0.03 that is the value of R 1. Similarly, R 2 will be 12.15 that is x max for this sample and 12.10 will be x min for this sample. So, R 2 will be 0 0.05, R 3 will be again x max minus x min, x max will be 12.15 minus 12.09 that is 0 0.06 then R 4 will be 12.12 minus 12.08 that is 0 0.04 and this is R 5 that is 12.14 minus 12.09 that is 0 0.05 and you will take average of all these R values. Average of R 1 to R 5 will give you R bar. So, if I calculate the R bar and the value of uh, A 2 I can take uh, if you remember we discussed a quality handbook data and uh, in that uh, based on the sample size uh, different parameters are given A 2, D 3, D 4 etcetera. So, if I take that uh, value of A 2 from that uh, table and use this R bar value, I can also get the value of upper control limit and lower control limit using this formula. But since uh, directly in this particular problem the standard deviation is given as 0 0.02 minutes. So, I need not to go for uh, this lengthy calculation of uh, uh, determining the uh, upper control limit and lower control limit directly using this formula and the number of observations are given to me as uh, 4 in these. So, 3 into 0 0.02 that is the standard deviation for each sample divided by number of observations under root uh, you will have uh, and uh, this is plus this is minus. So, this becomes 
that is the value here and this LCL uh, this is the value of uh, CL 12.11 and this is 12.08. So, this becomes the valuation of upper control central limit and uh, lower control. So, now you will plot different values of x bar on this chart. Now, the first value of x bar is 12.10. So, let us say this is uh, samples. So, first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample and fifth sample. So, first sample is 12.10, it will come somewhere here because our central line is at 12.11. So, it will be slightly below the central line. Second sample is 12.12, it will be slightly above this is 2. The third is 12.11, which is going to be at central line third. Fourth is 12.10 it is here. Fifth is 12.12, uh, it is here. So, you see if I join these uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all these 5 points are within UCL and LCL. So, you can conclude that the process is in statistically controlled limits. No point is above to UCL and no point is below LCL. If some point is above UCL, it means more variations are happening. If some point is below LCL, that also means more variations are happening. So, both these are undesirable that the production process is not in the control if it is beyond UCL and LCL. We immediately stop and see why it is happening. So, this is how my x bar r chart is being plotted. Sometime you need to have uh, two charts together like in this case uh, we had uh, x bar chart and then you can have r chart also. So, here x bar chart and r chart, you calculated central line, upper control line, lower control. Similarly, for r chart central, upper and lower, it is x double bar, x double bar plus a 2 r bar, x double bar minus a 2 r bar this is uh, r bar, this is d 4 r bar, this is d 3 r bar. So, you have to plot in our this example, if I say that uh, and on the bottom of this you can write the sample numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 let me slightly extend them this way. You will have uh, the value of 1 coming here and value of 1 may come here. Value of 2 is coming here, value of 2 may come here. Value of 3 in my x bar chart is on the central line, but in this case uh, it may be here, Maybe I am just uh, imagining, I have not uh, done the calculation, fourth it is here, it is here, fifth in this case it is here and fifth in this case it is here. Now, I need to check both these diagrams simultaneously and here I see that these two points are out of control. 
you have some expected range of deviation the deviations will have within upper control and lower control limits but uh, you found that at third sample and at fifth sample at third sample the range is less than the desirable range you expect that uh, there can be a deviation of uh, some uh, 0 0.02 minutes but uh, actually the deviation came of uh, 0 0.01 minute which is uh, looking much better but you know that uh, my process is not capable of uh, producing products uh, of uh, that lesser deviation so either it is a poor measurement uh, or some faulty entry or some uh, overlooking the uh, inspection process and as a result uh, this low deviation is there so it is mostly because of uh, some uh, human issues because of which you are getting the value below LCL. Sometime you get a point uh, at number 5 uh, which is above to UCL and this uh, above to UCL may be because of some uh, problems in your process that uh, the quality of glue which you are getting it has uh, more uh, water content and because of more water content uh, it is taking more time to dry or maybe if uh, you are drying that glue in front of a fan so fan speed not appropriate now uh, fan is not operating up to the optimum speed and because of that reason uh, it is taking more time to dry and uh, these type of issues you can resolve by identifying the reasons that why these problems are happening and therefore you can resolve these issues but uh, uh, both these points are alarming points that uh, your overall value of x bar is within the limits uh, but there are some issues with respect to variability in the process so your process is either producing no variability that is on theory looks very attractive but practically we know that uh, variations are natural you cannot eliminate so if you are uh, going below the natural variations uh, they it raises the doubt about your measurement process and if uh, variations are more than the natural variations uh, that means uh, some assignable reasons are present and you have to immediately solve those assignable reasons. So, most of the time we use x bar r chart uh, together so that uh, we can make uh, better decisions with respect to quality control in the processes. Now, this is one point the second point which is uh, important to know that we need to make as many x bar r charts uh, as many variables we want to control in a simple product just to give you an example if uh, you are interested in controlling the length of your final product you require only one set of x bar r chart now with length you want to also control weight of the product you require two set of x bar r chart one set for length another set for weight if you want to control length weight and tensile strength then you require three sets of x bar r charts so as many number of variables you want to control that many number of uh, x bar r charts are required for uh, controlling the process parameters after understanding the x bar r chart and how do we plot these x bar r charts now we need uh, we move to another category of charts uh, which are control charts for attributes control charts for attributes uh, are very different than the control charts for variables now first we need to understand that what is an attribute what is an attribute so attributes are used when these are the kind of you can say process characteristics and the process characteristics which can be counted rather measuring for an example in case of length of a pen you are going to measure the length of the pen whether it is 5 inch 5 inch 5 5.5 uh, 5 inch or 5.9 inch 
or 6 inch. So, you are measuring it and when you are measuring a particular characteristic it becomes uh, variable, but if I say the length is acceptable or not acceptable same thing, but if I say that uh, the length is acceptable or not acceptable. So, I will give answer that out of these many pens which I have produced the length of these pens are acceptable and these pens lengths are non acceptable. So, now it becomes an attribute. So, attributes are those things those process characteristics which are counted not measured. So, if you are measuring something then it is a variable and if you are counting it then it is a attribute. So, how many products in your finished product are acceptable? So, you are having a lot of 20 products and out of a lot of 20 products you are counting that 4 products are defective and 16 products are acceptable. So, this type of count is actually giving birth to the control chart for attributes. Now, in the control charts for the attributes the most common type of chart is the P chart and the another chart is C chart. So, first we will see what is a P chart. Now, a P chart is appropriate when the data consists of two categories of items accepted not accepted yes no these are the two categories. So, when your data is divided in these two type of categories a P chart is more suitable. For instance, if glass bottles are inspected for chipping and cracking both the good bottles and the defective ones can be counted. So, you have uh, as an end product uh, some uh, glass bottles available with you and you are uh, seeing only these things uh, in that glass bottle that whether it is chipped some chip has come out of that glass bottle or is there any crack in the glass bottle. So, you are uh, checking these bottles for chipping and cracking and uh, you can determine easily by counting that uh, in your sample how many bottles are ok and how many bottles have uh, either chipping or cracking. So, you can put uh, both uh, chipping and cracking in the same basket. So, now one can count the number of uh, similarly the accident accidents that occur during a given time period of time, but not the number of accidents that did not occur. So, there are situations that uh, where you can count both the situations. So, in case of this bottle example you can determine that how many bottles are ok and how many bottles are not ok, but on a intersection where vehicles are continuously going in different direction you can only count that how many number of accidents have happened here, but you do not know how many accidents have not taken place you cannot count. So, only record of uh, similarly in a city how many thefts have taken place. So, you have the record of how many thefts have taken place, but you cannot determine by any method that uh, how many thefts did not occur because uh, that is uh, never counted no no mechanism is available that uh, these thefts have not occurred. So, uh, in some cases you can know in both the categories yes no how many defective how many non defective, but in some cases uh, you cannot have data for both the categories. So, we have some examples similarly. So, in these cases the where we have uh, data for both the categories we can determine uh, the defective number of pieces or defective number of occurrences and based on that uh, ratio of defective numbers uh, we can plot uh, the chart which is known as uh, P chart. This is about C chart. So, we are uh, leaving it at the moment uh, we will discuss or we will come it uh, come to it uh, later on. Now, when we are plotting a P chart the idea is uh, very much similar what we discuss for X bar and R chart again we have a central line and we have 
अपर कंट्रोल एंड लोअर कंट्रोल लिमिट यू सी एल एंड एल सी एल नाउ इन ए पी चार्ट वी विल डिटरमाइन दी वैल्यूज ऑफ पी दैट इज देंट्रल वैल्यू एंड पी प्लस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन इज द अपर कंट्रोल एंड पी माइनस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन दैट इज द लोअर कंट्रोल एंड पी इज द वैल्यू ऑफ पी इज रेशो ऑफ डिफेक्टिव पीसेस so here the formula of upper control and lower control is p plus minus z into the standard deviation in p value and this z is normally 3 sigma because we want to have all these deviations within the natural range so uh, by default the value of uh, uh, this uh, calculation of upper and lower control limits uh, is plus minus uh, Three standard deviation. So uh, this is the formula for calculation of uh, this uh, uh, standard deviation. That p into this is like this. If uh, it is more clear, if I write in this way, divided by n. So this is the formula for calculation of the value of uh, a standard deviation in case of uh, p chart, and uh, you will multiply this uh, by three. Uh, to get uh, upper and lower control limit and uh, we will do one or two numericals uh, based on this formula that how to plot a p chart in our next class uh, with this we come to end of this session thank you very much